Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Carolee Makes Cards. Today's cards are all about shadow boxes featuring some new products by Spellbinders. The details for the Christmas cards come from Silent Night, Make a Scene, and Shopping Cart Holiday and Presents. The New Year's card is filled with all kinds of fun details from Shopping Cart Party On. Shadow boxes are fun and easy to make for that special recipient, so let's get started. All of the cards are A2 size. The shadow boxes have been constructed from Nina Classic Press 110 pound cardstock. For the cards in portrait orientation, my cardstock is 6 and 1 quarter inches by 5 and a half inches. A2 size is 4 and a quarter inches by 5 and a half inches. 2 inches is added on to the 4 and a quarter inch width so that the Z fold can be completed on both sides. On both pieces of cardstock, I score at both half inch and one inch, turn it over, and then do it again a half inch and one inch. The creases are folded first in one direction and burnished and then fold it in the other direction and burnished again to create the Z fold. When the fold is completed on both sides, my panel will now measure four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, A2 size. Before making the folds on the second panel, I die cut an opening that I am going to create my seam in. I choose a rectangle from a nesting die set. I want to frame the window, so I'm going to be choosing the next largest die and the next smallest die to create a frame. This is adhered to the inside of the window. Next, I'm going to create the background for my shadow box. I'm working on Bristol Smooth cardstock and using the inks, faded jeans, shaded lilac, and wilted violet. This panel will be the same height as the shadow box, five and a half inches. The width, however, needs to be just a little bit smaller, so I make mine four and one eighth of an inch. Because of the fold lines, if it is the same size, it is not going to lay flat, it will buckle. When I'm finished, it goes into my spatter box and I use gouache that has been slightly watered down and a small brush to create lots of snow. The wintry village for this card is going to be created using all of the cute detail dies from Silent Night to make a scene. I first of all create a snowy backdrop using one of the hillside dies and glue it directly onto the ink blended panel. I apply a number of different ink colors to some Bristol Smooth cardstock that I'm going to be using to die cut a number of the elements from. A blend of black soot and rustic wilderness will be used for the trees. The houses will be die cut from rustic wilderness, candied apple, faded jeans, and wilted violet. Without adding additional ink to the blending brush, the edges of the elements are darkened with black soot. The Santa sleigh and his reindeer will be a silhouette in the sky. It is die cut from black sheet foam and from black cardstock. To stack this easily, I leave the foam die cut intact and apply glue directly to it. The impression that is created on the foam die cut makes it easy to align the cardstock one on top. It is set aside to dry before the excess foam is removed. Small rectangles of yellow cardstock are cut and placed behind the windows of the building. The foam back Santa and his reindeers adhere to the sky. A second snowy hillside die cut is adhered to the back of the window frame. I start layering the elements onto the card. I work back and forth between the back panel and the front one. As I do this, I constantly place my window frame back on top just to make sure everything can be seen.
When I'm happy with this village scene, I use Nouveau Stone Drops Chalk White to apply some snowy accents. I've had the Stone Drops for a while, but was never really quite sure how to use it. It has a grit in it, and so it is perfect for creating texture. I apply it to the top of the buildings, and also where I envision the snow would gather in the evergreen trees. Snow is also banked up against the houses, and I create some snowy details in the hillsides. The Merry Christmas sentiment was die cut from white glitter paper, dotted with Tombow glue and left to dry. When dry, Tombow glue is tacky. I'm going to be adhering the sentiment to an acetate strip and I don't want any chance of glue smearing on it. The acetate strip is trimmed down so that it will fit across the window opening. Double-sided tape is placed on either end to adhere it. This is a good option so that the adhesive will not be visible. Liquid adhesive is used to attach the front panel to the back panel. I like that it gives me just a little bit of wiggle room just to ensure that everything's put together square. This card is finished up with a holly die cut accenting the sentiment. I pop in two red sequins topped up with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. The second shadow box is in landscape configuration and uses the elements from shopping cart, holiday and presents. So like the other card, we are adding two inches onto the width. Because the change in the orientation, this time the height will be four and a quarter inches and the width will be seven and a half inches. Like the previous shadow box, each end of the panels will be scored at a half inch and one inch. When the score lines are creased into the Z fold, the panel will be A2 size, four and a quarter inches tall and five and a half inches wide. This time I'm going to create an oval window. I use three consecutive dies. The middle die is used to cut the window in the panel. The smallest and largest die are used to create the window frame. The frame is adhered to the inside of the window. And as before, the panels are creased and burnished. The background for this card is going to be ink blended on Bristol Smooth cardstock. The width of the panel is trimmed down just shy of five and a half inches so it fits nicely between the folded lines. The tree is going to sit on the left hand side of the panel so I start off with scattered straw to create a glowing effect for it. The rest of the panel is finished off with faded jeans and right around the edge of the panel black soot. After working away and getting all the colors blended, I ended up adding some squeezed lemonade onto the scattered straw just to brighten it up. This set comes with everything that you need to trim the tree. The tree was decorated with the star and beautiful pieces of gold garland. One die cleverly cuts three styles of Christmas ornaments. I finished decorating my tree rather quickly. I would apply three or four dots of glue and then use my jewel picker to pick up those tiny ornaments and pop them on the tree. Even though it may look like it, the ink blended panel and the tree had yet to be adhered to the base of the shadow box. Lots of sparkly goodness was applied to this panel using Gina K's Gold Glitz Glitter Gel on a snow stencil. The gift boxes and their lids were die cut from patterned paper. I had some extra garland left over from the tree, so I decided to use that as a ribbon on one of the gift boxes. Both the Christmas tree and the presents were adhered to the background. The addition of some pretty gold bows and this scene is complete. Almost. 
All the ornaments on the Christmas tree were accented with nouveau crystal drops morning dew. The top of the shadow box was adhered to the base. The liquid glue gives a little bit of time to make those final adjustments to make sure that everything is lined up. The Merry Christmas sentiment was borrowed from the Silent Night die set and cut in gold cardstock. It was dotted with Tombow Blue and left to dry completely. When dry, it is tacky and repositionable. I was able to fuss with it a bit and make it follow the line of the oval window. And that completes the shopping card, holiday and presents shadow box. The final card is a celebration of New Year's with a really cute set called Shopping Cart Party On. The first thing that I do is find the right sized rectangular die so that the banner can be attached to either side of the window. Found it! A little bit of post-it note holds the die in place as I run it through the die cutting machine. As with the other cards, the frame is constructed by using the die that is one size smaller and one size larger than the one that was used to cut the window. The frame was die cut from matte gold cardstock and adhered to the back of the window. Black cardstock will be used for the background. Pixie Spray, a repositionable adhesive, is applied to the back of a confetti stencil to hold it to my black cardstock. I'm going to be applying three colors of Gina K's Glitz Glitter Gel in small groupings on the stencil. The palette knife that I choose for this task has a sharp pointed nose to allow me to work into small areas and not have the colors blend together. I begin by applying several groupings of red confetti. I then move on to the silver and then finish up with the gold. There's definitely a party going on here. The front of the shadow box has a lot going on so I decorated it first. The happy sentiment from Spellbinder's birthday wishes for everyone was die cut from black foil paper and stacked on foam. The cute party shoes, the banner and the mask were die cut also from black foil cardstock and accented in either gold or red cardstock. And finally, the foam backed number stickers round off the front of this card. The champagne glasses and bottles were die cut from vellum paper. The detail pieces for the bottles is just adorable. Those were die cut also in matte gold to go with all the other gold accents on the card. Although I did up three bottles, I only ended up using one. I can use the other two in another project. There are even dies to create the contents for the champagne flute and the champagne glass. I am just using the champagne glasses. Clear runner tape is applied to the gold champagne and the glass is placed over top of it. So many cute details in this set. Again, I use the clear runner tape to attach both champagne glasses and the tipped over champagne bottle to acetate strips. First, both of the glasses are positioned and adhered to the card base. I want them to clink together in a toast. Once the glasses are positioned and meet in the middle of the window, I'm ready to attach the bottle in a pouring position. The bottle is attached to the acetate so that it is facing down and slightly angled. Again, a little bit of runner tape holds it in position. The runner tape alone is not strong enough for these elements. I'm using it more to get them positioned and so that I can easily make adjustments. The acetate strips will be sandwiched between the front and the back of the shadow box. The liquid glue will keep the shadow box and those elements on the acetate securely in place. This card is wrapped up by trimming off the excess acetate. This is such an easy and cute interactive element incorporated in this shadow box. And that wraps up these three shadow boxes featuring Shopping Cart Party On, Shopping Cart Holiday and Presents, 
and Silent Night Make a Scene. These three die sets by Spellbinders have so many wonderful details in them, they are a joy to work with. Thank you so much for stopping by, and as always, I appreciate your visit.